Hello everyone and welcome back to Nanmu November. Today you are getting two for the price of one. Today we're going to be looking at Nanmu's Ankylosaurus Mace, both the standard version and the injured offering. Now, originally I wasn't too interested in either of these figures. For whatever reason, the design of the Jurassic World Ankylosaurus never appealed to me. I don't know if they're even that different, but I always enjoyed the JP3 Ankylosaurus designs more for some reason. <laughs> Listen to me, I sound like a dad. Ankylosaurus designs were better in my day. But the takeaway is when Nan Moon revealed their mace figures, I was kind of indifferent. I was considering maybe getting the brown version since that figure seemed to be closer in color at least to the JP3 offering. But long story short, another contact got in touch with me and offered to trade me some extras they had purchased on accident. I figured what the heck, I would at least get the standing version, but he was in intent on keeping them together, so I had to work in enough trade to get the injured one as well. I don't really know why I'm telling you all of this, this is how I got the figures, isn't that fascinating? The point is, these were one of the few sculpts from Nanmu that I was not instantly taken by. And I probably would have skipped them entirely if not for serendipitous reasons. But now that I have them in hand, has my opinion on them changed? Well, let's take a look and find out. From a sculptural standpoint, these two figures are very much the same when it comes to details. The heads both feature those uneven armored scales on the top, which transition to smaller rounded scales on the lower jaw. There's some nice wrinkling and folding skin around the open mouths, and the inside of the mouth has a lovely gloss to it despite not being being sculpted too deep. You can see that the eyes are once again very distinct and full of character, having vibrant blue coloration to them. The horns at the back of the head have some lovely wear and weathering to them, as do the armored spikes on the rest of the body. For whatever reason, the armor on these Ankies feels oddly undefined if that makes any sense. Leave a like if that makes any sense. The sculpts look better under all this lighting, but just on the shelf, it does look a little more rudimentary. The dry brushing isn't, I don't know, distinct enough? to make that knobby texture really pop until you get to the business end of the animal and look at that club tail. That's got a nice, very dry brush to bring it to life. Meanwhile, the scale and skin detail on the arms and legs, that's all very well defined and the bright blue washes that were present on the top of the head can also be found on the legs, really making all of that sculpted detail pop. The underbelly and flanks are also much more cleanly sculpted. The scales and crosshatch and leathery skin look great on the underbelly of both of these figures, and it really isn't until you see that that you realize how sort of basic the armor looks in comparison. I don't think the armor looks bad, per se, just a lot less interesting than the rest of the figure. The head, legs, and underside of these models have a commendable amount of work put into them. I'm a big fan of the way all of that looks, especially on the injured version. The standard one is standing pretty stiff so there isn't a lot of room for movement in the skin, but the way the skin is pulling from and around the limbs of the injured one while the weight of the gut sags towards the dipping side, that looks awesome! As far as other disparities and details go, you can see the armored spikes along the flank of the injured version seem a bit longer and even feature some chipped and broken tips, which is a nice touch. Also, there are some scratches carved into the right shoulder and on the face. If I'm being honest, they don't even look that deep, and I think this injured ankylosaurus is just being dramatic. Now let's talk paint. Again, basically the same on these models. You have the gray-blue main coloration with a sort of yellowed cream dry brush on the cheeks and back of the limbs, while the bright blue wash can be seen on the head and legs. The underbelly has a more brownish coloration, which is more prominent on the standing version, and the club tails and armor spikes also feature some different paint. The injured version has more of that bright blue dry brushing on both the spikes and club, while the standing version has a cream color over the base coat of that gray-blue. Overall, not terribly interesting colors on these guys. Screen accurate, but not terribly interesting. Pretty monotone. But the washes and the dry brushes help the finer details pop nicely enough, I guess. I will say the color application seems a bit more delicately handled on the injured offering. It's a lot more thickly applied on the standard version, but it's not anything that makes the injured version look way better than the standard one or anything. Let's talk the poses because that's really the focal point between the two. The standard version looks to have its feet planted firmly beneath it while its tail sweeps back rigid and at the ready. It reminds me of the defense pose the Ankylosaurus took in Jurassic World as it prepared to fight the Indominus, and the open mouth looks like it's giving the same warning call it 
gave in the film. With that in mind, if you have the Indominus Rex from Nanmu, I think this would make a fun companion piece for dioramas or toy photography. Heck, if you wanted to take the storytelling a step further, you can have the injured version already at the mercy of the Indominus, then have his buddy come into his aid. I will say these two play off of each other in a way I did not expect. There's almost a sympathetic quality you get when you pose them with one another. It's like the standard version is attempting to help or defend its fallen brother. Perhaps if you got the alternate color scheme, you could have a mated pair. Really, this is the best example of storytelling pieces we have gotten from Nanmu, which is worthy of applause. Since I'm kind of transitioning my focus to the injured version, let's talk about that one. It's posed on its side with its left leg tucked beneath its body while it tries to get its other three legs under it. The tail is curling back around the body, and honestly, without those injuries, this thing could almost look like an ankylosaurus that is rising from a nap with a big old yawn. I always think it's cool to see dinosaur models in a not standard pose, so if you want to imagine this one as resting, I think that's a cool take on it as well. I honestly thought it might be kind of fun to get a little pet bed for him or something, and a little collar, something to kind of display him in. It looks like it could be a mini dinosaur pet, right? Kinda? Yeah? No? Am I losing it? Leave a comment letting me know if I've lost it. So yeah, when you put these two together, they actually play off of each other in an awesome way, making them great for photography, dioramas, or just a display with something a little different. It's always nice when a dinosaur model has some character to it, and these two have it aplenty with one another. Let's talk size. The standard measures in at roughly 9 inches long, or about 23.5 centimeters, I want to say. It's about 4 inches wide, or just past 10 centimeters, and the top of the tail comes up to 2 and 3 quarters inches off the ground, or 7 centimeters. If you measure along the curve of the injured version's back, you're looking at 11 and a half inches long, or about 29 centimeters. He is slightly girthier too, at around 4.5 inches, or 11.5 centimeters wide. His arch back comes up to roughly 2 and 3 quarters inches off the ground, or 7 centimeters. For size comparisons, here it is with the other Nanmu figures. Links to those previous reviews will be in the description, but yeah, these also show you just what I mean when I say that these figures can be posed in very engaging ways with really any predatory figure you've got. Next up, I'll go ahead and bring in the Rebor Warpig Ankylosaurus, basically the best bet for a JP-inspired Anki for years now. You can see how these guys look together, and honestly, now that I have both, it might be time for another head-to-head. -head. I have a feeling this one might be a bit harder to call than the last one, though. And of course, we've got the Mattel Rorivore Ankylosaurus. This is one example where Mattel kind of outdid Nanmu in terms of some detail. Look at the armor on the Rorivores with all those tightly packed scales. Then compare it to the rough sculpt of the Nanmu offerings. A bit more going on with the Rorivore there. But yeah, with everything else, Nah, not so much. And of course we have Chris Pratt, who's actually at a perfect size and stance to be comforting both of these Ankylosaurus models. This is kind of fun, puts me in mind of what would happen if Owen was to meet Bumpy. Okay, before we wrap up this review, we need to address the elephant in the room. Price. Normally this is something I only mention in passing, but here there's a distinct difference that bears discussing. The standard Ankylosaurus is available at the average Nanmu cost of $55 or so. The injured costs a whopping $20 more, bringing its price to $75 and making it the single most expensive Nanmu product currently available at the time of this recording. The massive Apatosaurus and Mosasaurus figures are available for $70, as are the Immaculate T-Rex and Spinosaurus models. The only figure that comes to mind as costing more than this would be the upcoming Nanmu Giga and maybe the Indominus Rex if I recall correctly, but those are both larger figures, one of which has a base and posable jaw, and the other one has a posable jaw and a posable tail. According to Lana Time Shop, part of the injured version is cast in flexible resin. I don't even know what that means. I know resin is more expensive. I've never liked it. I don't see the point of it for these mass-produced figures. All it is is pricier and more fragile in my eyes. So when I found that out, all I could ask was... Why? Why did this figure have to be cast in resin instead of just plastic? Maybe they just wanted to do it that way, but that's... I don't know, I don't see the point. Then I got the figure and I was like, where's the resin? It doesn't feel much different than the standard version. The armored spikes are a little less flexible than on the standard offering. Are the spikes supposed to be resin? What difference did that make? I, I will say it is heftier than the standard, but it doesn't feel any heavier than the Xenoceratops or larger and yet cheaper figure. So again, I'm left to ask why? 
For one thing, I'm just put off by resin because it's fragile and the paint on the resin figures I do have chips if I so much as look at them funny. And then there's price. How many more injured versions do you reckon Nanmu would sell if this was $20 less? That's a meal. That's half a tank of gas. That's a cheap TJ Maxx outfit you'll wear once to a party and then forget about. But now I'm talking about TJ Maxx, so I'd better move on. Case in point, I don't understand why this had to be resin. I don't think it benefits from being resin, and despite the undeniable unique charm of the figure, it makes it harder to recommend given its ballooned price. And that makes for a nice segue into my closing. Do I recommend these Ankylosaurus models? Um... It's tough, man. Like I said at the start, I'm not big on the Jurassic World Ankylosaurus designs. But that doesn't mean that these aren't great models, especially together. I like them a lot more than I thought I would, and the price is really the biggest question. There's no articulation to these figures, the paint job and detailing isn't as amazing as some of the other Nanmu offerings, yet they're still in that high price range. In all honesty, I think these work best as companion pieces. I don't recommend getting them on their own because pairing them with each other or or alongside figures like the Indominus Rex is what makes them awesome for display. But again, the price point is just too high for something that really isn't as great on its own, making it harder to recommend. But hey, maybe you absolutely love the Jurassic World Anx, and if that's the case, then these are definitely the best models of those creatures out there, and you should by all means get them. There's no denying their screen accuracy or artistic merit, it's definitely about the price on these ones, and that's why, to me, these are both both discount dinos. Great models, but if I hadn't gotten them in a trade, you would not have caught me shelling out the $130 or so it costs to get them both. However, if you're chomping at the bit to get these figures, I will leave links in the description below for different places you can pick them up. As always, I want to know what you guys think of these figures. Do you own them yet? Are you planning on picking them up? What is your favorite design for Ankylosaurus in media, science, or otherwise? Drop a comment down below, and as always, thank you so much for tuning into today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you again tomorrow, and we take a look at a certain T-Rex killer.